Up next is a short but very vital update on Jelani Day. This will be very brief before returning to Illinois a bit later with hard evidence on exactly what was happening there. So look forward to this. There's a line of cases that need to be gone through. So I appreciate it. Continue to spread the word. Here we go. Much awaited. Jelani Day. Thank you. A bill that honors the official life and legacy of Jelani Day is a step closer to being law across Illinois. Jelani was a graduate student at Illinois State University who went missing in August. Despite efforts to find him alive, authorities found his body floating in the Illinois River on September 4th. His family criticized local investigators for not working quickly to have the FBI involved. The clarion calls that came out as a result that were for sweeping changes were heard around the country as family members of other missing people of color found the FBI was called in much later than those used for other nationalities. Senate Bill 3932 requires county coroners as a result or also medical examiners to notify the FBI when at any point human remains are not identified within 72 hours. It received unanimous support in the Senate six months after Day was first reported missing and has since passed the main House committees. There are databases and whatnot available to try and streamline some of the process, Cam Buckner of Chicago claimed, but often the FBI does not know that the remains have been found or that they are unidentified. So this is based on alleviating these processes. This change to the state's Missing Persons Identification Act was unanimously passed from the House Judiciary Criminal Committee. The Jelani Day bill now heads to the House. If the plan gains approval, Governor J.B. Pritzker should be signing it in April. So this is... um, supposed to finally now be signed into law in April. Thank you. Keep getting the word out. I appreciate it. Editorial. And this will be a short update, which is very important, on the Jelani Day case. But this is a very short update before getting back um, into that when the evidence officially arrives. So the autopsy is being redone, and the editorial here states, Illinois House of Representatives and Governor J.B. Pritzker are set to fast-track the Jelani Day bill. So now they've officially reviewed the Jelani Day bill in the House of Representatives and actually passed it as law in the Senate. So this is a very important and interesting update in regards to this cold case. On February 24th, the Jelani Day Bill, Senate Bill 3932, was passed by the Illinois General Assembly and Senate. The bill is currently awaiting approval by Governor J.B. Pritzker, as well as the final roll call for the Illinois House of Representatives. The premise of the bill is to get the FBI involved in any kind of situation if a medical examiner is not able to identify human remains within 72 hours after finding a deceased body or or running into one. A statement from Jelani Day's mother, Carmen Bolden Day, stated she cried tears of joy that Her son is making an impact for all these other families now. With the lack of urgency for Day's case, this bill is a huge step in the right direction to ensure those who receive the justice they deserve receive the justice they have always deserved in the proper amount of time. The first 72 hours in a missing person case is extremely crucial in finding the person. Those beginning hours mean the difference of life or death in these types of cases. Therefore, this bill is vital for those who go missing every single day. 
Jelani Day's murder was ruled a drowning, but his family questioned the investigation by local police and the LaSalle County Sheriff, and after hounding them enough, it is now no longer believed to only be a drowning. Carmen Day has refused to give up, and the outcome of the situation was the creation of this bill that was approved by the Senate to not only create justice for her son, but for all missing people in Illinois. What happened to Jelani Day has also affected the entire ISU community, and still does, for these questions that must be answered. The families of missing individuals should not have to go through what Day's family went through to get justice. All missing individual cases must be treated with the same amount of urgency, reverence, and respect from all officials, including FBI. With that in mind, the Illinois House of Representatives and Pritzker must pass the bill and help the families of these individuals get the justice and closure they rightfully deserve. Yeah, this has been very interesting. And so this is a, a vital update, very important. It's in progress now to be signed finally by the governor. Thank you. A little more to cover. Um, so the issue is, of course, there's been quite a bit of speculation about this report due to the fact it came out just within the last day. And this has popped up a huge amount when searching on the Jelani Day case, especially recently. And it states more than a decade after this man was stabbed to death on East Harlem Street, detectives arrested a suspect in the case directly thanks to the DNA left on a murder weapon, the Manhattan DA stated. Paul Corona, age 29, was linked to DNA left at the scene and on the handle of a knife used to fatally stab Aiden Gonzalez on the corner of East 115th Street and 2nd Avenue. Corona, who was 17 years old at the time of the slain, asked Gonzalez if he was a member of the Latin Kings gang before he plunged a knife into his chest. <clears throat> Gonzalez was not in a street gang, the police sources allege. <clears throat> However, as Corona stabbed Gonzalez, Investigators now believe the blade of the knife broke off. The stabber left the knife's back handle on the sidewalk near Gonzalez's lifeless body as he fled. In the year 2014, police discovered DNA left at the scene that belonged to Paul Corona. The next year, the genetic text and results came back as conclusive. In 2016, police arrested a man in an unrelated incident who fed them information about Corona's role in the slain. Despite this lead, it was another six years still for police to lock up Corona, a delay they attributed to the Manhattan DA. They, the police, were waiting for the DA's office to give a green light on this drug, drug bust. Corona, who was a Brooklyn resident at the time, was arrested Thursday and charged with first-degree murder. Questioned at the 25th Precinct Station House, Corona admitted that he fought with Gonzalez and then he stabbed him multiple times. This is being held for arraignment in the Manhattan Criminal Court this week. So, why is this interesting? Because it turns out Paul Corona also went to a number of student functions and student events that Jelani Day was at. That's correct. And when we look at this, this is very interesting because this is the area in September of 2021, of all places. It's covered with all of this construction, this just unbelievable construction, and cafes in this exact area where this victim was stabbed. And this is very interesting indeed. Because now we're learning more about Paul Corona um, that will require basically a new video to kind of go into some of the information that Corona and what was going on with Corona a bit later. But it makes you wonder, you know, what was going on here exactly? What, what was the mafia up to over here when he was 
when he was stabbed. And might that be something that relates directly with Bertolino Law, for example? Because this is very interesting, isn't it? Look at this area. All the cars are unmarked, and we don't really have any information. But we do know that some of the suspected call girls involved in the Jelani Day case, including Allison Menjavar, actually came to this area of New York for their little assignments occasionally. And that really says it all. You know, there's something beneath the surface of the Jelani Day case that doesn't sit right. And it doesn't sit right with me because one of the passwords that were used in one of these bank accounts that they opened up illegally in other people's names, including my own name, essentially, one of the passwords that was used, you know, was like Bratwurst. And so it doesn't sit well with anyone. And what is, what is Bratwurst? Bratwurst is a type of food that's only common for this street of New York. And here's the question I've asked before. Because Paul Corona stabbed the victims here, and because he knew Jelani Day, um... Just how far is Bertolino Law's, uh, I mean, how far is Bertolino Law exactly from this area where Paul Corona stabbed several victims and students? And from what I've seen, it's not that far at all. Maybe less than 10 minutes. And that is very interesting. So thank you once again. And please continue to go ahead and get the word out far and wide on this case. Jelani Day. We need to finally get answers. This is a very short update. But it's providing a wider picture now of what these killers were up to. And that's the number one thing we need. So I want you to get this out to the mass general public and to the general audience. We need answers on who did this and the exact people involved that killed Jelani Day. Thank you.